The second hand of the clock ticked past midnight. October 4th ended, and the curtain rose on October 5th, 1986. The switch was still pointing to the left. The witch's words had been proven correct. Have I gained your trust now? Y you bitch! With a hideous sweat-covered expression, Eva snatched the cash card away from the witch's hand. How about a bank book and seal? We can't withdraw anything with just a card. All you need is the pin. It's eight digits long. Wait a second. I'm writing it down. Oh, wasn't one part of the pin battler's birthday? I bet you the other part is Shannon's birthday. <clears throat> Ifa and Kyria <laughs> both took out a pen and notepad and began writing the eight-digit number the witch told them. That is everything I have to tell you and to give you. I will say nothing more. All of my tasks have been completed. After saying this, the witch spun around and sat down on the bed. She wasn't even looking at the others anymore. She sat there like an empty husk which had, just as she had said, finished everything it existed to do. For a while, everyone watched the witch to see if she would remember something else and start talking. However, she said nothing else. The witch who had called herself one of the dead was now little more than a large French doll wearing a black dress. Gold is the only physical embodiment of magic that can exist in the human world, since ancient times even a small bit of it could control men with its magic. In that case, how much magic power would dwell in it if it was piled up in a mountain so high you would have to look up to see the top? Don't be so stupid, we'll split it evenly. Isn't that the obvious solution? Didn't we say that half of this pile would belong to me and the other half would be split between the four of us? The yells of the humans dancing around the gold reverberated throughout the underground room. Do you really have to do this? I think even even if you take all, like, even if you do take, uh, even if you do agree to what Klaus just said, you would still have more than enough for the rest of your life. I, I wouldn't even give a shit. The yells of the humans around in front of the pile of gold. They were arguing about how it should be split. Did you solve the riddle all by yourself, Nissan? You didn't, right? The four of our siblings solved it together. Of course we'll split it in four equal parts. Coward, weren't you the one who's, who first made the proposal about the ghost distribution? How can you disregard that so easily? You really... You really think you're in a position to bargain? When you're the ones hiding Dad's death? Yeah, yeah, you've been swindling us this whole time treating Father's wealth as if it were your own. All you need to do is split the gold evenly and we'll drop all the rest, including that particular issue. It sounds very fair to me. Well, if you insist, go ahead and try splitting in four ways. Let's divide this pile up right now, and you can all take your own shares home. I hope you have pockets that gold 10.5 tons of ingots. It seems you've all been driven mad by the gold and lost all the ability to make rational judgments. What do you mean by that, Klaus Nissan? Look at this ingot. As you can see, there are no official markings, just father's crest. How do you intend to turn unmarked gold like this into cash? Mm, well... Have you finally figured it out? This pot of gold may be worth 20 billion yen. However, that's only if you can trade it for cash. Aren't any of you capable of exchanging this many unmarked, unidentified ingots for cash at the proper rates? If it was a necklace or a ring, exchanging it for cash would have been a man manageable problem. However, doing that for several tons of unmarked gold that couldn't be made public would be impossible for any normal person. <coughs> However, Klaus could do it. Among the several business friends that remained from Kinzel's generation, there were some who had black market ties and a lot of financial power. The billion yen tied to the cash card that the Golden Witch had held out a second ago had already been turned to cash thanks to one of Kinzel's connections. However, none of the other siblings had any connections like that. They would have to rely on Klaus to get cash for the gold. Now you're finally seeing it. I apologize for hiding all of those things about Father. However, you're in no position to take advantage of that weakness. You really think you have such an advantage just because of something like that? Oh shit, she already took the gun. So we're going down that route. What do you intend to do with that gun? Please, just scaring us. If I was gripping the gun so hard, it looked like it might snap. The four guns that the witch had placed in this room were now in the hands of the relatives. Just as the gold had led their hearts astray, it seemed these guns had the magic of heart to turn their hearts to violence. Finally, a scuffle arose between Eva and Klaus. 
off to the side, Natsui started arguing with Rudolph and his wife at the grand underground VIP room, but Phil was filled with thundering jeers. Seems like Aoife, uh, Beatrice doesn't even, have to, doesn't even have to kill anybody. Angie being forced to watch this scene for so long. Uh, after being forced to watch this scene for so long, Angie's face was starting to contort with pain. It was only natural after being shown this abusive argument between her parents and her other relatives. What on earth? It was painful for Leon too. Leon would have tried to intervene and calm them if that had been possible. The gold isn't going anywhere, right? If you just slow down and think, you'll be able to resolve this. Result uh, going by what Eva and the others said, it's clear that will be they that will they It's uh, it's clear that they will need a lot of money before the end of the year. However, the billion yen cash card should be more than enough to pay for that. That would handle their emergency expenses, so they could then convert the gold to cash at their leisure and just split it, split it among themselves. Sure, maybe Klaus was the only one capable of converting the gold. That might give him an advantage over the other siblings. However, this gold couldn't be dealt with by open means. In addition to attracting public attention, it would also lead to various legal problems. It was better for the secret money to remain secret. If they wanted to get the largest portions possible, then they should all agree not to tell anyone about this gold. In other words, to maximize their profits, they would all need to make a gentleman's agreement to keep the secret. Klaus didn't have a slight advantage. However, it was possible for the other relatives to refuse to cooperate and tell the world about the gold. And then there was also the concealment of Kinzel's death to consider. Klaus was an investor. He needed not only financial clout, but also a certain degree of public confidence in him. His advantage isn't big enough for him to act so overbearing. The mountain of gold has made everyone lose their ability to think rationally. This isn't an argument between adults. It's just a fight between kids. What's so fun about showing us this? Or is this the game of some new witch? Are they watching us suffer from somewhere laughing? By now, even I didn't have a clue who was showing this to us, or for what reason. After the very least, this new tale didn't seem to be overflowing with affection. At first I thought it was a tale of a beautiful world, when no crime occurred and Claire's regrets had vanished. But something's different. This tale is clearly filled with ill will towards us. I'm sure of that much now. But I don't have a clue who would want to show us this. <coughs> uh oh. Suddenly, an explosion rang out. I didn't think it was the sound of gunfire. After all, people living a normal life never hear that kind of sound. <gasps> it was the sound of thick raindrops hitting the floor. There was no rain in this underground room. It was blood dripping down from Natsuhi's right eye. The bullet had gone in through her... I'm sorry, what? <coughs> the bullet had gone in through her right eye towards the back of her head. Natsuhi! It's your fault for jumping at me! The gun which fell from Eva's grasp landed on the floor with a hard metallic clang. As though in response to that sound, Natsuhi's head slowly turned to face the ceiling. Good job, Eva. Natsuhi! Natsuhi! Natsuhi flopped backwards. When the back of her head hit the floor, a red splash spread out beneath it, forming a single flower to adorn her dead face. Natsuhi Nisan! Why did you shoot her? Why, Eva? Eva? Klaus howled, raised his gun, and ran at Eva. At the same time, Hideyoshi led between them. A scuffle broke out between the two men. How could you? Natsuhi! <laughs> Eva is back to ruin her, your day. <laughs> Seriously. Klaus Nisan, you've got it wrong. You've got it all wrong. It was just an accident. Eva, how could you? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I didn't shoot. I didn't. Even though I told her to stop, she just jumped at me. Klaus had just seen his wife killed before his eyes and lost all traces of rationality in his expression. He was so furious that if he had knocked Hideyoshi aside and jumped at Eva, he might have torn her throat out. Why did you kill her? Why, Eva? It was an accident, an accident. Calm down, Klaus Nisa. Oh, Another explosion rang out. Hideyoshi's face was covered with blood. 
The two of them had been fighting over the gun Klaus held, trying to push it away from themselves. When the barrel had turned a point at Klaus's chin, the sneering formless reaper, the master of the room of gold, had swung its scythe once more. A line of blood trickled from Klaus's mouth. The two fell down with Klaus's body on top of Hideyoshi. Letting out a cowardly cry, Hideyoshi backed away before Klaus's body could cover him. It's dear! I didn't do anything. Klaus Decent's finger just got caught on the trigger. It's an accident, an accident, I tell you. That's right, an accident. This is all an accident. What are you, the accident couple? As the pair of them broke down sobbing and repeatedly claiming that it was all an accident, Rosa and the others were unable to say a thing. The witch also watched this scene but said nothing and appeared to be completely disinterested. It was no fault. It was just an accident. You saw right, right? Right? You saw that, didn't you, Rosa? Klaus Lisa and the Nazi Nason both let their emotions get a hold of them and charged at us. Who knows? I couldn't say either way. Stupid Rosa! You saw, didn't you? You saw it from right there, so you must know. I'm sorry. I can't tell if it happened by accident or if you killed them and tried to make it look like an accident. Rosa, you... Rudolf Kuhn, you saw. You know what happened, right? Right? Sorry, but I agree with Rosa. We can't tell if it was an accident or intentional. Rosa's and Rudolf's gazes look very cold and indifferent to Eva and her husband. What are we going to do? They were shot to death. Saying it was a simple accident won't convince anyone. The forest. We say they went to the forest and went missing. They will buy us some time. That won't get us off the hook, right? The police will just search the whole forest. And anyway, why would those go to go off into an uncultivated forest like that? It'll look suspicious from the start. There's no way we'll get away with it. They'll be okay. If we hide the corpses here, no one will be able to find them. If we all play dumb, it'll work. It won't. There's no way you can fool the police. If the two of them disappear during a family conference where we were arguing over the inheritance problem, the police won't just put it down as a case of missing persons. I just had an idea. Just blow everything up. Though Eva had been scratching at her head, overcome with emotion, her arms suddenly fell as though their strings had been cut. What do you think of? An accident. We just need to make it look like an accident. Idiot. What kind of accident? There are clear gunshot wounds in both corpses, right? Even if we burn them to make it look like they were caught in a fire, it'll still be obvious that they were killed with guns. A fire? It's not good enough. We need more. A much more massive accident. A massive accident? Eva slowly walked forward, tapped it and spoke. An explosion accident. Explosion accident. We just need the sort of accident that will leave no traces for the corpses. Oh my god, no, not that face. As she played with a switch that would cause an automatic explosion at midnight, Eva spun around to look at them, a crazy expression on her, on her face. <laughs> it was truly a mad flash of inspiration. If they flipped the switch to the right and waited for midnight, the 900 tons of explosives would wipe out the mansion without a trace. There wouldn't even be anything left of the corpses. There certainly wouldn't be any way to tell that they had died by gunshot wounds before the explosion. <coughs> it's an unshakable fact that this island is still filled with explosives from the war. Then by coincidence, tomorrow night, something will set it off by chance, and the whole thing will explode. Yes, it'll be an accident. An explosion accident. What do you say? There's no way the police will find out the truth. This way we can pull it off. We can hide the manner of their death. That's crazy. Shaking, Hideyoshi frantically searched for a counter-argument, hoping to shut down Eva's mad idea. But he couldn't find one. If they blew everything up, the facts would all be muddled. They could make it look as though Klaus and Nazi had died in an explosion accident. But how would you explain that everybody else was on the other side of the mansion? Yeah, of the island. It's perfect, just perfect. After all, it was an accident that they died anyway. We're just changing the type of accident. Isn't that right? We can think up any story we want. But chance, the rest of us will have to be in the hidden mansion tomorrow night. Then, when the explosion accident occurs, we'll be lucky enough to survive. That story should work. Just what sort of story are you planning on? What kind of story could explain how the two of them alone remain here, while the rest of us conveniently went to a hidden mansion and managed to escape? Yeah. That's what we've got to think of now, stupid Rosa. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as we all agree to it. I'll think of something. I am thinking. You all think too. 
I was wondering the same thing. Is he gonna check the servants as well? Someone think of something. Calm down, Ava. I'll think about it, and so will everyone else. We'll definitely think of something, and it'll all work out. We'll share the burden. You won't have to carry all yourself. It'll be okay. It will. I know we'll think of a good excuse. What kind of excuse? We took the kids and all the servants to go exploring an underground passageway, leaving just the two of them behind, and the rest of us all decided to spend the night in the hidden mansion. How could any excuse work? It's insane. Seriously. And thinking of that insane thing is our job. Why are you acting like this has nothing to do with you? Well, because she wasn't the one who killed them. You think of something too. Nay, son, let me ask you a question. If you blow up the island, what will happen to this gold? Yeah, that's that was actually my first thought when she started thinking about the whole blowing up plan. I was like, how, in my head, I was like, how the hell are you gonna get all that gold to the other side of the island in time? Well... I mean, I guess it has to be possible, because it seems in episode 3 that's what happened. <coughs> or is it? I'm not sure anymore. I mean, she was definitely the only person alive. And she was still rich for the rest of her life, so I kind of assumed that she still had the gold, but I guess she would also be rich for the rest of her life, but just by inheriting everything. I'm, I'm not sure. We finally got our hands of, on 20 billion yen of gold, and you want to blow it all away? We can just carry it away, yeah, that's right. The explosion will happen tomorrow at midnight. We have a full day. If we all carry it together, we might... You realize there's 10 tons of it, right? Just how much do you think our small group can carry back and forth across this long underground passage that goes all the way across the island? You're being absurd. Here, we have this card, right? The card with a billion yen, the one that Warman gave us. We'll just carry as much gold as we can. We have the card with a billion yen on top of that. If we split that three ways, we'll have more than 300 million each. That should be enough for all of our purposes. I don't like it. You don't like what? We have a mountain worth 20 billion yen right here. Why should we be satisfied with just 300 million each? Rosa! Ifa's face twisted in anguish, and was met by Rosa's look of cold unconcern. If we gave Klaus Nissan his share, we'd each have a share of 5 billion, Sub subtract the 300 million from the card, and the rest of my share is 4.7 billion. If you agree to pay that much to me, then you can do whatever you want with this mountain of gold. What do you think you're saying? So you don't intend to cooperate? Nissan, please calm down and listen. This plan will let both of us leave with the maximum amount of money. What? I want you to go to the police and turn yourself in, admitting that you got into a scuffle and the gun went off. Are you crazy? I don't want to go to the police. Of course we don't want to say that the crime happened here. The police would find the gold. Yes, how about the Rose Garden? It's pour pouring rain now, so the police probably won't find any contradictions at the crime scene. I'll let you think of an excuse for why you and Nissan started fighting while you were holding guns in the rainy Rose Garden. Please don't try to get us and our shares involved just because you want to hide your own crime. Rosa! Yeah, but what about Natsuhi? It's not so bad, right? After all, it's not like they'll keep you in jail for several decades. It was an accident, right? You'll be able to get out after just a few years. When you've paid for your sins and come back, then you can do whatever you want with your five billion. No, I'd never do that. What would happen if you were arrested? What would happen to my husband's company? Who cares about the company? With 5 billion yen, working any longer would just be a waste of time, right? Rosa had never intended to go along with Eva's proposal. If it was a question of maximizing each person's portion, no one had anything to gain from an explosion accident. An explosion would conceal Klaus at Natsuhi's death, and it would serve no further purpose. From Rosa's perspective, the ideal outcome would be for them to confess to their crimes without any unnecessary tricks. All she wanted was to change the crime scene from here to a different place. However, Aoife didn't want to be arrested. Yeah, well, tough luck. I mean, you just fucking shot a person in the face. Well, that's usually what gets you arrested, you know. She didn't like having her shares bring from 5 billion to 300 million. <laughs> yeah, I smell another accident, too. But even that was more than enough to cover the amount she had been trying to wring out of Klaus in the first place. She wanted to hide what had happened here, even if it meant blowing away 5.7 billion yen. What would happen if they were arrested? The life, the company, and the trust that Ifa had worked so long to build were things that couldn't be bought back with money. So she wanted to hide Klaus at Natsuhi's death, even if it meant blowing up all 4.7 billion yen worth of her gold. But from Rosa's perspective, that was just irrational nonsense. 
Rosa! What do you think you're doing with that gun, Nissan? I think you're right, Christian. Are you going to have me die in the explosion too? It'll make finding an excuse even harder. In fact, it'll make it harder to explain away the other two deaths as accidents too. Three whole death means it'll be quite a large scale crime. It would probably get you the death penalty. Or life in prison if you're lucky. Even in the best case, you'll probably be put away for more than a decade, right? Turn yourself in. If you do, this will be no more than a pair of unfortunate accidents. Of course, your jail term won't be too terrible either. Don't worry about George Kun. We'll take good care of him. And we'll make sure that your entire share of 5 billion yen is waiting for you when you get back. Ifa ground her teeth and glared. The Rosa she knew should have been shaking and obeying her commands. And yet, Rosa wasn't scared. Her blank expression note that faint smile was one that Ifa had never seen before. Put the gun down, Nissan. Once you calm down, you'll see that my plan is the best one. Jail isn't so bad, right? Think of it as a financial strategy. Even if they put you in 14 years, there will be 5 billion waiting for you when you get out. That's like working for a 500 million yen salary, right? If you think of it that way, won't you enjoy your job more? Liar! You just want to steal my share away while I'm in there! Like your man did to you! He has nothing to do with this, okay? I won't run away, I'd never run away with someone's money! Oh, I'll never do it! Rose's once frigid face was filled with rage. The two howling people pointed their guns at each other, shouting insults. You could smell the gold room's reapers slinking closer. The smell of gunpowder, the explosive smell of death, filled the room. <sighs> this fucking family, man. Who is it, who is it this time? A bubble of blood dripped from Rosa's mouth. Then she fell over lifelessly, like a mannequin someone had pushed over. Aoife? Uh, it, it wasn't me. I swear I didn't even pull the trigger. Holy shit. The round in the chamber of your gun was spent when you fired at natsuki son, right? You never reloaded, so even if you pull the trigger, that gun won't kill anyone. Have no fear. As Kyria said this, she maneuvered the lever action with a practiced hand at the smoke-smelling shell casing was ejected. It hit the floor with a small metallic sound. Rudolph, I think you have accidentally married a psychopath. <laughs> that tiny sound had a disturbing ring to it. Rosa-san's analysis was a little naive. She has no idea how difficult it would be to exchange this many unmarked gold ingots for money. Back in Dad's day, even just showing this gold to get funding was enough to create the massive rumor called the Ushidomi Legend of the Gold. Exchanging this for cash is impossible. A pile of gold you can't use is no better than a pile of trash. Ten tons of gold were exchanged for cash on the black market and the successor and his wife died mysterious death. Expecting that to go unnoticed is what's really unbelievable. We don't want to get the police involved. We'll blow up this island and destroy all the evidence. If it's tough parting with the gold, feel free to grab as much as you can hold. The billion yen on the cash card is more than enough. In other words, Ifa Nisan was right. I'm glad. It looks like we're on the same page. If the police gets <coughs> get involved, who knows what might happen? It's the same with cashing in the gold. I'm sure that would have tripped us up somewhere, so we had no choice. Man, the music is going insane. <coughs> the one billion that woman over there exchanged for cash is the only money we'll be able to get our hands on. And even splitting that billion, it'll be more than enough for what we need. On top of that, now that Rosa is dead, our shares have increased even more. You're some cult motherfuckers being able to just talk about that. Just after she got killed. We can easily leave this island with what 500 million. Exactly. As long as we don't let our greedy desire to cash in the gold control us. We can pretend that everything that occurred on this island never happened. We have a way to do that right here. By this point, neither deaths from accidental discharges nor shooting murders meant anything on this island. Everything would be erased equally by the explosion accident. No matter what happened between now and midnight the next day, everything would be rewritten. And you told me to turn myself in. Stupid Rosa. You weren't satisfied with just 300 million. This is what you get for being too greedy. You brought this upon yourself. But curious that there was no need to shoot her, right? Even Rosa would have figured it out if you just told her. I did need to shoot her. After all, Rosa sounds the only one who didn't fire her gun. What does that mean? Matter. The guns lying at your feet are Klaus Nissan's and Ifa Nissan's. Both of those have been fired. 
Or a Rosa Sun's gun can shoot if you just pull the trigger. It's hard to reload one of these if you aren't used to a lever action. An amateur would have some trouble pulling it off. Curious, what are you talking about? You. They finally realized what Kyria meant. Rosa had the only gun that could still fire, so I shot her first. Oh, how foolish we were. Why didn't we realize sooner? Even though we knew there's a me mechanism for erasing everything that happens on this island, it felt hideous to her to pick up the guns that lay at their feet. At the same time, fire spread from Kyria's gun once more. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Hideyoshi let out a short scream, clutched at his chest, and fell over face down. Dear? Dear? Wha why is this? I'm pretty sure you're gonna be next. Ifa fiddled with the lever action, trying to imitate something she vaguely remembered from a western movie, but something seemed to be caught, and the still open lever didn't budge. See? It's pretty hard. You! Kiryu finished reloading with a fluid motion. The way she held it was as innocent and sure as a kid playing with a squirt gun. Rudolph, I think from this day on forward, you should never make your wife angry. With another heartless cry of gunfire, the puppet called Eva slumped down to the floor as though its strings had been cut. Rudolph, son. The billion yen card. I'm sorry. This um. <laughs> Crazy on minus one. <laughs> uh, no, uh, where, where? Uh, no, never mind. <laughs> sure. The cash card with a billion yen, which if I just grabbed from the witch, that alone was worth more than enough. The 20 billion yen pound of gold had skewed everyone's sense of value. Just a few million yen is enough for people to kill over. And this was a billion yen. Rosa son. Those were some famous last words there. Just 300 million? You were too greedy. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, lucky me. I don't have to fish through the corpse. As Rudolf walked up to Eva's body, he found the card lying beside it and picked it up. So this flimsy little card is worth a billion yen. Sticking with the company would be a waste of time. So do we close up shop and spend the rest of our lives in some southern country? I'm sure you'll get bored right away. Besides, I like seeing you get all worried about some problem, then leap around like a little kid when you finally overcome it. Huh, <laughs> sure you do. Thank you, Miss Golden Witch. Rudolph's son and I will make good use of this billion. Klaus Nissan promised to treat you in a gentlemanly fashion. I wonder if she's gonna do the same. Damn, so like everybody's dead except the two. But I haven't made any such promise. Did she tell them the pin? I think she did. She pulled the trigger with a trace of mercy. When the ringing of the gunfire died down, blood trickled from the witch's mouth and she fell over onto the bed. Once again, Kyria ejected the used shell casing. The four metal sounds of used shells hitting the floor seemed to symbolize the fact that Rulov and his wife now possessed all shares of the gold. All of them were really slow-witted. From the moment they heard about the bomb, they should have known that they wouldn't be leaving this island as a big, happy family. <laughs> Kyria gets results, I mean, yeah. Sorry about this, Aniki, Aniki Rosa. Well, that's life for you. Uh, you don't really seem that sorry, you know? Give me a rig, okay? Aniki and Aniki get into a fight, Rosa gets dragged in. And I'm the one who picks up the pieces. Just like it's always been, right? It wasn't as though Rudolf and Kiri had planned to kill everyone and take everything for themselves from the start. Kiri had quickly realized by the length of the barrel of the gun in her hands that it would probably hold five rounds at a time. Yes, Kiri and Rudolf were both very familiar with this gun. Rudolf, whose interest in gun from old westerns came from his father, owned a shotgun of the same model. Even Kiri had earned the qualifications to use that gun, becoming familiar enough with it that they could go shooting together for fun. Including the witch, there had been eight people there. Six people besides the two of them. Each gun had five rounds. That was one short. They didn't have enough to kill everyone. <laughs> to be honest, it really surprised me when they got into a fight and one of the guns went off. The coincidental accident had provided the missing bullet. It wasn't the second shot. 
the very first shot which had accidentally killed Natsu, he had guaranteed that this massacre would happen. In this smoke and corpse filled room of gold, the two of them wore, wore easy going smiles, hardly any different from those they usually wore. What do we do now? Rudolph picked up Rosa's gun. You know how at some point I mentioned that I like the two of them best of the siblings? I think I'm going to change my mind. Then he fired a test shot at the wall and ejected the old shell with a smooth motion like Kyria's. Kyria went to the box of bullets on the table, casually picked up a few, and loaded them one after another into her gun. I mean, they're still badass, but not very much likable anymore. Set the bomb switch to on. Then we just need to wait 24 hours. Everyone's gonna run wild when morning comes and they can't find us. But you're gonna... Are you even going to let Battler die and all the, like, I mean, the kids and everything? And, like, even the nine-year-old? Then we just need to make sure they don't. Guess so. What about Battler? He's your son, not mine. Don't say that. Look how attached he is to you. He really respects you. Then think of a clever way to trick him. I'll worry about Angie. Worry about Bellacon. Fair enough? Mm, sure. I'm kind to my own children, but it's a real pain to be nice to a Sumasense kid. You understand, I hope. Kiri's voice had grown cold. She had acted warmly towards Bella because that had been the adult thing to do. He was Rudolf's son, so she tried to avoid being hostile, nothing more. But underneath, he was the son of a Sumo, a woman Kiri still hated even though she was dead. Now that she had given birth to Angie and finally built up the new family, was Battle's return really such a happy thing for her? Get yourself ready. Now that we've come to this come this far, we can only go for the billion yen or die trying. If you can't convince Battlecon, I'm sorry, but I won't be taking any chances. No need to threaten me. I'll take care of it. I'll find a good story to tell him. Make sure you do. I know Angie will be very sad if she's forced to hear about Battlecon dying in an accident. Sure. How do we start? We have nothing to gain by waiting for morning. Now is the best time. Oh, wonderful. Not even time for a break. <coughs> Man. <coughs> Sorry, I'm pretty hoarse right now. But I hope it will go away. A test? What's this supposed to be? At this time of night? Starting now? Betja, Betler, Betja, Betja, yeah, Betja leld. Betla yelled widely to the receiver. When he said at this time of night, George and Jessica turned to look. According to the clock, it was past midnight. It might be a normal time to be told to brush their teeth and go to bed, but he couldn't understand what this test thing was all about. Okay, I'll hand it over. Here, George, Aniki. It's my dad. Hello, this is George speaking. Oh, hey, George Gunn. Sorry to call so late. You weren't sleeping already, were you? You all still up chatting away? Pretty much. Maria's only sleeping. Oh, wait, it looks like she just woke up. Thanks to you. So what did you want to talk about? Bella comes to something about your test. Oh, yeah. Dad can be such a pain. Oh. Dad can be such a pain sometimes. Sandy. <coughs> oh, I guess Rudolph. It means Kinzo. Dad can be such a pain sometimes. He suddenly came down from his room. Bunch of stuff happened, and by the end he was talking about which grandchild would make the best successor. But isn't Uncle Klaus the successor? He says the four of us aren't up to the job, so he's gonna skip us adults and choose one of you grandkids instead. It's all so sudden we're really freaking out here. Aniki and the others are all arguing about it across the room. I'll bet you can hear Aniki shrieking in the background, huh? It's not so. If that's what Grandfather says, then there's no way around it, I guess. In that case, what shall we do? He says he wants to call you out one by one, starting with Jessica-chan. Oh, wait a sec. Okay, you still there? It looks like you and Jessica-chan will be the first up to bat. He wants Jessica-chan to go to the parlor in the mansion. You're supposed to go out in front of the chapel. <coughs> it's so sudden I hardly feel ready. What sort of test is it? Looks like Dad made some kind of crazy quiz. Some weird questions about what it means to be the head. Mm, that sounds strangely familiar, doesn't it? Of course, a few things about this seemed off to George. However, Kinzo was famous for doing radical things on a whim. Even this strange test seemed plausible on him once he heard that it was a sudden idea of Kinzo's. But even so, if he wanted to test them one by one, why wouldn't he call them out one by one? 
They could have just had everyone wait in some reception room to be called in one at a time. Why would two people be called to different places at the same time? The plan didn't seem to make sense and George felt he was missing something. Still, I wonder why he wanted to meet you in front of the chapel of all places. He expects a lot from you. I think he wants to talk to you alone, not sure what about. Grandfather wants to talk to me. I wonder what he's going to say. I mean, you're the most talented of all his grandkids. He's probably got something to tell you in particular, right? Anyway, that's what he says. Get over there right away. I'm supposed to go to the chapel too, so let's get this over with or we're both going to catch colds. I'm starting to get a very crazy idea, but I'm not going to say it yet. Oh, I see. Okay. Then I'll head towards the front of the chapel. And Jessica Chan will give you the parlor. Sure. I'll see you in a bit then. What sort of test or private conversation could Kinzer possibly want to have at this time of night? Then again, it's a well-known fact that Kinzer doesn't have long to live. It wouldn't be so strange if he wanted to give some sort of will to each of his, uh, to each of his descendants individually. Inside George's mind, the faint feeling that something was wrong was replaced by a desire to meet Kinzo directly and hear about this in more detail. George set down the receiver and quickly explained to the others. <coughs> it's as you heard. Grandfather says he wants to give us all some kind of test. Hmm? A test? After hiding in his study all these years, he suddenly decides to give us a test this late at night? Damn that old geezer. What's he thinking? It seems our parents f feel the same way. It sounds as though they're very worked up about it. Well, I doubt getting worked up about it will change Grandfather's mind. Exactly. We might as well accept it. It's Grandfather's order, after all. Let's obey it. The start, Jessica Chan and I are being called out. I'm going to cha the chapel. Jessica Chan is supposed to go to the parlor in the mansion. What about Maria and me? I think they'll come contact you later. Wait here. Well, a midnight test. What could it be? What kind of test is it? Quiz? A puzzle? I'm really good at wolves and sheep puzzles. Ooh. Maria, who was now fully awake, seemed to be very excited about this unexpected midnight test. Then we'll just hang out here. Yes. Okay, I'm going. It sounds like they're already waiting for us. So he's making one of his grandkids the successor. Sounds great to me. Now I can let one of you guys deal with it. I'm gonna become the successor. I wanna do it. No. <laughs> Having Maria as the successor wouldn't be so bad. Bye. Bye boy bye boy bye boy See you later. Bye. Bye. Rudolph put down the receiver and stood up. Okay, guess I'm going to the spot in front of the chapel. It's damn cold out there. Gorda son, have some coffee waiting for me when I get back, will you? <sighs> Next to Rudolph, Gorda was lying face up. His face was covered by a crossword puzzle book. Puzzle book. However, it paid, its pages were stained with blood, and you didn't need to move the book to imagine how he had met his pitiful end. How was it? A nice script, don't you think? Yep. We shouldn't be thinking. We should be thanking Dad. If we just said it was him being fickle, no one's gonna doubt us. Then let's split up. I'll take care of Jessica Chan. You take care of George Kun. You got it. Let's get this over with quickly so we can relax and have some coffee. There won't be any problems, yes? No sudden pangs of conscience? Curious smiled coldly. It probably would have been safer to call them out one by one and finish them off together. However, Kiri had chosen to have her husband work separately. She wanted to measure Rudolph's resolve. If she was the only one who got her hands dirty and Rudolph just watched, his heart wouldn't be as dedicated to this venture. I probably shouldn't even be so surprised at Kiria being so cold. I mean, uh, a while ago, in episode 5 or 6, she even told us that she was about to fucking murder Asumu. And the fact that Asumu died by her on her own just meant that she didn't have to do it, but like, I think she basically said Asuma would have died either way. If she hadn't died on her own, I would have killed her. She seems a bit messed up in the head. More than I thought so far. I, sh I mean, I already thought she was a bit weirder than I thought her initially when she started saying the whole thing about I, I would have killed Asuma anyway. But yeah, she seems to be even more messed up than I thought. By having him dirty his own hands, she could make him truly determined to see this thing through. 
Kiri understood this sort of mind game better than anyone else. Rudolf reflexively averted his gaze from the cold glint in her eyes, but then he just shrugged and answered her question. Of course, we have a billion yen riding on this. And I'm a man. I'm not gonna miss a chance that'll ever come again in my lifetime. I expected no less of you, Rudolf, son. I love people who seize chances when they come. That's why I fell in love with you. Thanks. I'm glad. Rudolf, son. What? Stay like that. Always, okay? Huh? What do you say? Always remain the same Rudolf, son, I love. Okay? Because if you don't, then maybe one night, you will fall asleep, but you will not wake up again. Did you say something? No. <laughs> Of course, whenever I ever let you down, you should be worrying more about what kind of champagne we'll use to toast our victory. I'll do that. Take care now. If you really treasure Batlacoon, don't kill George Gunn in front of the chapel, okay? It'll be a pain if he finds the body. Yeah, I know. I'll lure him away somehow. We'll be outside and it's raining. Should be some way to do it. And you aren't a villain, some old western, got it? Don't grant any last requests or take down any final messages, okay? Kyria lifted up her gun again and ran the lever. To eject the casing from the round she had killed Gora with. Dear, dear. Uh, what? Eva was holding Hideyoshi's body and crying. She hadn't been shot at all. I'm sorry, what? The bullet had grazed her head and missed. She hadn't been playing dead. She really thought that she had been shot. When Kiryu's gun spat fire, Eva felt something fierce skim past her head before feeling lightheaded and fainting. Then she had awoken in the now silent room of the gold. The remains of her beloved husband lay beside her as well as Klaus, Natsuhi, and Rosa's corpses. It was a room of death and piled up bodies. When she had cried all she could over Hideyoshi's body, uh, she, when she had cried all she could over Hideyoshi's body, she realized that she still had something she needed to do. George is in danger. George, George. They're trying to use the bomb to blow up everything to bury this whole island with an explosion accident. Of course, as if I had expected, the switch on the clock was set to the right, which meant that it was active. If I move to flip it to the left and stop. Yeah, if you do that, they will notice that you're still alive. That's right. As long as the switch points to the right, everything that happens will disappear in this night of illusions. Yes, this is an illusion. No matter what happens tonight, everything will become muddled and hidden away. They're probably going to kill everyone else. That has to be it. I'm sure of it. When she looked at the table with the box of bullets, she saw signs that I had roughly grabbed a bunch of bullets before leaving. It clearly showed that they planned to use that many bullets. I have to fight, if only to protect just the life of my precious son. The gun that I dropped when I was shot is stuck with the lever open. No matter how hard I pull, it won't open any further, and it won't close again. Apparently a bullet has gotten jammed, breaking it. It's just as Kyria said, loading a bullet is tough if you aren't used to it. Please, dear, lend me your strength. Lend me your strength, so that I, that I can... Sorry. Protect George. In Hideyoshi's hand was Klaus's gun, which he had been trying to pick up. Eva took it, prayed to her husband one more time, and tugged on the lever handle. With a light metallic sound, the golden casing spun through the air and bounced off the ground, when she timidly tried to push the lever back. This time it returned to its original place without any resistance. There was another metallic clang. It was the sound of a new bullet being loaded. I figured it'd be something like this. Someone scheming to show me the game that disgusted me most just to mock me. In the game so far, various people have been suspected of being the corporate or an accomplice. The only difference now was that Rudolf and Kyria were those suspects. However, to Angie, there was the most infuriating plot twist possible. Even Leon was full of painful thoughts. Solving the appetite was supposed to be the only miracle that could lead to a game without a single victim. But ironically, the tragedy hadn't been averted even so. Does this mean we aren't allowed to have a future where we all happily return from this island alive, even if the epitaph is miraculously solved before the crime occurs? A miracle certainly will not occur. Those words which I had heard in one of the fragments Bernkastel had shown me raced through my mind. Bernkastel, son, 
You showed me how wonderful my world was. I don't want to believe that you created this tale just to hurt Angie. <laughs> By now, even I realize that you're the game master here. Please tell me, why are you showing us this game? Of course, no one answered Leon's moderate question. Is she really the game master? I, I wonder. I have a different idea. The game created to mock Angie continued emotionlessly, with more terrible twists that didn't betray anyone's expectations anymore. Huh. Show whatever terrible game you like. You're trying to say that this is one of the endless possibilities inside the cat box, right? Just do whatever you want. I won't let something like this get to me. Someday I'll find out the truth of what happened on October 5th, 1986. After meeting Kyria in the parlor, Jessica was told that the test would be held at the dining hall and she followed Kyria there. On Kyria, there's no one here. He'll be here soon. Sit over there. Jessica sat in the chair she had been offered, looking nervous and agitated. Kyria was by far the calmer of the two. Kyria closed the door behind her, revealing the gun that rested behind it. Jessica was facing the other way, so she saw nothing. Did you hear anything about this on Kyria? Like, what kind of test is this? Yes. It'll be over soon. I sure hope so. As she complained, Jessica turned her head around and the tip of her nose bumped into cold metal. Huh? Uh, Uncle Rudolph? What are you doing? Huh. I guess shooting people in the back just isn't for me after all. Like, that was dangerous. What on earth are you doing? Come on, why else would someone point a gun and pull the trigger? Rudolph reloaded rapidly and pulled the trigger again without any sign of hesitation. As the sound of gunfire thundered through the rain, George grabbed at his side and fell to his knees. Uh, that's weird. I guess it really does shoot low. This gun's really good bad, good and bad. Somebody, help me, Uncle Rudolph is... George started stumbling away, still clutching at his side. His voice as he called for help was weak at then. In comparison, Rudolph, who stood behind him, looked perfectly calm as he fiddled with his gun and checked his sights. It hurts. It hurts. It fell to George as though something had been gouged into his side. It was so painful that he could barely stand and walk. He leaned against the trunk of a tree. After he crouched down, trying to cover his wound, he was no longer able to stand back up. George didn't have a clue what was going on. However, he had felt as though something was wrong with this whole time. Of course, it was strange that he'd be called out alone to a place like this at a time like this. And yet, how could he have known that something was wrong? After all, his own uncle had told him that his grandfather was asking him to join the family conference. How could he have suspected? Sorry about this, George Good. It hurts, doesn't it? If I knew it'd come to this, it would have been kinder to blow out your brains from behind. I thought it'd be too cruel to finish it off before you knew what hit you, but it looks like I've got it backwards. Why, Uncle Rudolph, why would my not kind uncle do this? Forget about this. But tomorrow night, all of it won't have happened. With a quick use of the lever handle, he loaded another bullet. The casing of the bullet that had pierced George's side fell heartlessly in front of him. Everyone's gonna die in a sudden unfortunate accident. Until that moment, we'll all be a big happy family. That's how it's gonna be. So don't worry about this. Forget it all. Of course, George didn't have a clue what Rudolph was talking about. All he knew was that Rudolph wanted to kill him and that he showed no trace of hesitation. His image of Rudolph as the ideal cool, joke-loving adult didn't match up with the man standing in front of him holding a gun. No, maybe this feels wrong because it fits him too well. He has that same smile as though he's about to tell some hilarious joke, but he's pointing a gun at me. Why would that kind, funny Uncle Rudolph do this? It made him feel unimaginably sad and tears flowed from his eyes. Uncle Rudolph! I admire you so much. I've not always told you, George Coon. Make sure you don't end up as an adult like me. Now you see why. In the next world, make learning how to spot villains your first priority. I know you can do it. After all, it's just another kind of study. He bit down the pain in his side. With the last of his strength, George threw his whole body into a roundhouse kick. At the same time, fire swept from Rudolph's gun. The bullet pierced George's chest. George spun around as he fell amidst an outpouring of blood. He moaned wordlessly, checking a clenching bloodstained teeth. A frigid gun was pressed harshly against his temple. 
so long. Go become a great man in the next world. Don't get blinded by money like me. Can't believe that my uncle would kill for money. <laughs> You're so innocent. People can kill over money. Did Ruthless Trigger forestall any further questions? George's hands, which had been covering his wound, dropped lifelessly. When Rudolph saw the last glimmer of life leave him, he sighed deeply and looked tired. <laughs> that was easier than I thought. Rudolph looked up into the dark, rainy sky, the raindrops hitting him full in the face, and laughed with an indescribable expression, his tongue hanging out. I thought my conscience would bug me more. Now that it's over, it was pretty easy. Rudolph laughed. This was probably just the thing Kiri had hoped for. It had taken considerable effort to kill George. He may have been merciless, but the last traces of the conscience in Rudolph's heart had probably slowed him down. However, now that he had killed someone with his own hands, a turning point that few people ever reach, Rudolph had finally awakened. No, he finally understood. It's just like squeezing dough out of a bunch of molars. The same old game of musical cheers. If there's a pile of money in front of you, the first one to reach it wins. The slow ones just get kicked down the hill. Haven't I driven dozens of poor fools into debt with my earliest windows? Several of those probably ended up bankrupt, and some of those might have hanged themselves. And I always laughed like it was none of my business. And that's all there is to it. The only difference now is that for the first time, I've dealt the final blow with my own hands. Thanks, Kyria. You're always the best at cutting away my naivety. Rudolph's evil laugh rang out. The laugh was so purely evil it was almost soothing. Hypocritical evil that still contained some pangs of conscience is far more repulsive to behold. If a man's committed to doing great evil anyway, how much more pleasant and gallant it is when he is wholly devoted to his goal. In that sense, Rudolph's evil smile and laugh were pleasant and gallant indeed. Which means the brutal bloody stage of the dining hall must have been soothing as well. That's a sound that I kind of know from Higurashi. <laughs> a clang, a thud, a crack, a squish. A strange mixture of these sounds kept repeating over and over at the same tempo. Each time a red splash landed on the tablecloth dangling nearby. Jessica-chan, can you hear me? Kiria asked this with the sort of smile any aunt might make to her niece. However, Jessica didn't answer. There was nothing particularly surprising about this. After all, by now, her nose had been broken, her eyes had been smashed, her teeth had been knocked out, and not only her nose, but her entire face was now hardly recognizable as a face, just a lump of bloody flesh. That's a great image to leave you with while I quickly go to the toilet. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Kyria finally stopped her task of repeatedly smashing Jessica's face with the stock of her gun. That seems completely unnecessary if you ask me, but okay. Still sitting on top of Jessica, she tossed her gun to the side, pulled a compact out of her pocket, and looked at her own face in the mirror. Because that is the perfect time to do this. Then finally she realized that her face was covered by speckles of fresh blood. How terrible. This cloth will have to go too. With a muffled laugh, Kyria shakily rose to her feet. Jessica wasn't moving anymore. She had been convulsing a bit until a second ago, but now she was as still as stone. Smashing a woman's face is nothing new to your aunt, okay? Sorry about that. If you hadn't resisted, I could have given you a much cleaner death. Oh, that's nothing new to you. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> perfectly normal. I mean, then again, if we think about the other... If you think about her family, like the other, her sister or whatever it was, constantly talked about tea, which pretty much translated into a torture room, like, that family seems a bit messed up if you ask me. Kyria pulled the tablecloth off and used it like a towel to wipe the blood from all over her body. However, instead of taking the blood off, it just smeared it around and did nothing to remove the stench of blood and death that covered her. 
When she got tired of rubbing the tablecloth against the blood, Kira walked over with the extension line telephone in the corner of the room. Then she dialed the number for the cousin room in the guest house. Hello. It's me. It's your turn now, Pelican. Go to this spot in front of the chapel, please. Yes, that's right. I haven't been given any instructions from Maria Chan. Have her wait there. Yo. Yes, keep your wits about you. I'm rooting for you to be chosen as the successor, Pelican. With the same smile as usual, the poly wiped splashes of blood still covering her face, Kyria finished her call to Balor. When she set down the receiver, there was a small knock and Rudolf came back into the room. Hey, you look like shit. <laughs> Jessica-chan has better reflexes than I gave her credit for. I didn't think she'd be able to fight back from a situation like that. It's a bit of a shame she had to end up looking like this. What a waste of good, of a good Natsuhi-esque woman. And how about your end? Did he give you much trouble? No problems there. Pain, plain and simple. When Kyria heard Rudolf's instant response, she favored him with an evil smile. Yes, the man she loved was the sort of who could do it, uh, it if he tried, without letting cheap emotions get in the way. I love you, Rudolf. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's hard to imagine the easy job to net your billion yen. <laughs> Pain and simple. <laughs> Seriously. It's like Dad always said, in the life of every man that comes one day when he has to be willing to kill. I'm not sure he meant <laughs> fucking m murdering your own family like a psychopath, but okay. In, all words, in other words, always be determined to survive, even if you have to kill to do it. That's my favorite line of his. What's next? My rifle is hungry for blood. You've got a big job coming up. Convincing Batlacon. Oh, that's right. That'll be a pain. Hope I don't have to end up a pulling trigger. I've really enjoyed life as a three-person family with Angie, but if you really want that could to join in on that, give it your best. Sure. I'll make sure we don't have any complaints from him. Don't worry, I've worked out a scenario to trick him good. Good luck. Even I hope that Angie's beloved big brother doesn't get caught up in the explosion accident. I know. Then I'll head back to the chapel. Rudolph, son. What? If you can't convince Bellacon. I know, I know. If that happens... Bang. Batlacon is independent enough that he left the family out of protest when I married you, remember? If you can only convince him halfway and if things get nasty later on, he'll prove fatal to us. I know. Believe in me. And if... If I decide that Batlacon is growing suspicious, I'll kill him myself. He's not my kid, after all. Yeah, I know. So promise me one thing, Kyria. What's that? If I can trick Battler and the three of us make it off this island. If that happens, what? Never say that Battler isn't your kid again. After all, you're his mother. Please. Sure, I promise. Kyria shrugged and answered as she loaded bullets. You go to the chapel. I'll wait until Balakon is left and then clean up everything inside the guest house. Are you sure you'll be okay doing that alone? That's my line. Betla left the guest house under an umbrella. He had been called to the area in front of the chapel just like George had been. Not even 30 minutes had passed since the time George and Jessica had been called out. Apparently this test didn't last too long. Damn geezer. First you never come out, not even for lunch, and then you show up in the middle of the night with a test. I'll bet living as a shot-in's got this sense of, uh, his sense of day and night all backwards. Complaining all the way, Betla strolled off into the rain. Almost immediately he was swallowed up by the darkness of the Rose Garden and passed out of sight. And then, Kyria could be seen coming out from the darkness of the Rose Garden. Her right hand held a gun, her left an umbrella. Her inner pocket contained the master key ring she had stolen from Goda. Her right pocket had a handful of bullets. Her left hand uh, held a knife she had taken from the kitchen. She was carefully and perfectly outfitted murderer. Another bolt of lightning struck down from the swirling skies. It lit up only half of Kyria's face. Her cheek was still covered with Jessica's blood. Under the eaves, Kyria folded up her umbrella, smiled and spoke to no one. Hey everyone, I'm home. It kind of sounded like the RPG Maker XP door sound just now. Rudolf could be seen under the eaves of the chapel. He had hidden his gun in the nearby shadows and was now smoking a cigarette. Should be easy to drink that dimwit. And if it doesn't work, that's just too bad. He glanced over at the place he had stowed his gun. The cigarette smoke began to pleasantly cloud his mind. 
Battler isn't a kid anymore. He's an adult who can choose his path through life as he pleases. When animals grow up, it's normal for them to form a group and go on a journey. Humans are the only ones to keep treating their young like kids, even after they get big. If I had known it come to this, I never would have begged for you to come back. I regret dragging you back into the family. He puffed out those words, along with the smoke. When Batlock came, he didn't intend to voice those regrets of his. Rudolph was already determined to play the part of the evil murderer who kills for money. He's still not here. What's taking him so long? At that moment, he heard the sound of someone stepping on gravel. He looked up thinking that Batlock had finally arrived, but the sound had come from the direction opposite of the mansion. Uh oh Is he gonna get shot now by Eva? <gasps> Rudolph, how could you do that to my husband? Anniki, uh, so you're alive. Um, sorry that I'm alive. Too bad, but my husband wasn't so lucky. How could you? How could you? With a face obscured by anger and tears, Ifa slowly walked closer, her gun raised. Just shoot him already. Her husband had been killed right in front of her. She probably wouldn't even hesitate. Realizing that a gun quivering with anger was pointed right at his chest, Rudolph backed away. As he pretended to retreat, he approached the gun he had hidden in the shadows. Calm down, Anagi. Put the gun down. I never wanted that to happen. Everything happened so fast, there was nothing I could do. How can you tell such a half-baked, such half-baked lies? As Eva had said, had said it, it really had been a half-baked, pointless thing to say. Rudolph would have said anything if he thought it would calm Eva's emotions before she pulled the trigger, which she looked capable of doing at any moment now. Then Rudolph's foot came in contact with his gun. Well, let's just talk this over. George Kuhn should be here soon. Oh, hey George Kuhn, we're over here. Rudolph waved as though George was coming from behind Eva. Let's let Eva's attention turn to that direction. That idiot. My simple big sister has always been a sucker. Die! 